Let's take a look. 1.1.1. We have x squared minus 3x plus 2 being equals to 0. We are supposed to solve for x. Should be easy to see that we can simply factorize here. We are looking for two factors of 2, of which when we multiply, we get 2, obviously, because they are factors of 2. But when we add, we get minus 3. That is minus 2 and minus 1. Okay, if you multiply those two numbers, you get plus 2. But when you add them, you get minus 3. So x is equal to 2 or x is equal to 1. That is the solution to 1.1.1. One. Let's take a look at 1.1.2. So 1.1.2, we have 3x squared being equals to minus 2 minus 6x. We're supposed to round off our answer to two decimal places. Obviously, we are going to use the quadratic equation here, the quadratic formula. But we still need to take minus 2 and minus 6x to the left hand side, of which we're going to get 3x squared plus 6x plus 2 when equals to 0. should be easy to see that a is 3, b is 6, and c is 2. So we're going to have x being equals to minus b, so that is, that is minus 6, plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac. So b squared, uh, we have 6 squared minus 4ac. A is 3, C is 2. There we go. And then we divide everything by 2A. A is 3, so we, divided, we are dividing by 2 multiplied by 3. X is equal to 2. So let me just go ahead and put that in my calculator. Minus 6 plus the square root of 36 minus 4 multiplied by 3 multiplied by 2 divided by 2 multiplied by 3. Okay, when one possible value of X is minus 0 0.42 when i round off to two decimal places and the other value of x is so let me replace the plus with the minus sign i'm getting minus 1.58 right so there we go that is our solution to 1.1.2 so obviously uh, with the quadratic formula, it's very easy to make a mistake in substitution or make a mistake in determining the value of A, B, and C. So let's verify and just check and see if everything is fine. So 3x squared, we take minus 6x to the left-hand side, it becomes plus 6x, and then plus 2. That is, perf that is perfectly fine. A is 3, B is 6, and C is 2. No wrongdoing there. And then we have minus b, so that will be minus 6. And then b squared is 6 squared minus 4ac. a is 3, c is 2, divided by 2a. And then let me just put it in the calculator again one more time. We want to make sure that we don't make any mistake here. Okay, I'm still getting the same answer, so I'm still getting minus 0.42 and minus 1.58 but i can always substitute them back into this equation and see if i'm going to get zero so 3 multiplied by minus 0.42 squared plus 6 multiplied by minus 0.42 plus 2 does that give me zero that gives me 0 0.0092 so obviously because i have rounded off it's not going to give me exactly zero but I'm quite happy with that answer. Okay, let me move to the following one. Uh, when I move to the following one, I have to substitute minus 1.58. So minus 1.58 and minus 1.58. What do I get? I get the same thing. Minus, not minus, but 0 0.0092. So I'm quite happy with my answers. I can do 1.1.3. So let's go ahead and do that. 1.1.3, we have 2x minus 1 being equals to the square root of 1 minus x. We have to admit this is actually an easy case. A difficult case is if you have a plus 3 or any other constant on the same side with a square root. That becomes, <laughs> well, in this side it will be fine, but imagine you have a square root here and you have plus 3 there. 
what do you do in this case you still need to square on both sides but issues are going to arise but in this case we can fairly say that uh, this answer is well not this answer but this question is not too difficult in squaring both sides we are going to get um 2x minus 1 squared being equals to the square root of 1 minus x squared i copied that down again and squared it uh, just for the faint-hearted ones but let's go it 2x multiplied by 2x is 4x squared and then 2x multiplied by minus 1 is minus 2x you multiply that by 2 you get minus 4x plus 1 plus 1 is coming from minus 1 multiplied by minus 1 so there we go and then on the right hand side we're gonna have 1 minus x okay so 4x squared so we have minus 4x plus x so that is minus 3x and then one when we take this one to the left hand side we're gonna get zero so we have 4x squared minus 3x being equals to zero okay i'm happy that we are kicking zero there because it sort of simplifies our problem our problems our problems no longer that difficult anymore we can take a common factor of x of which when we do that we're gonna get 4x minus 3 being equals to zero so we have two numbers multiplying each other and then uh, the product is zero so one between the new uh, the two numbers has to be zero so what are we saying we are saying that x is equals to zero or 4x minus 3 is equals to zero in order for 4x minus 3 to be equals to zero we need 4x to be equals to 3 and therefore x is equals to 3 over 4 so these are our two possible solutions x is equals to 0 or x is equals to 3 over 4 but take a look at this we got this answer after we squared both sides but this problem that we are solving is this one this is the problem that we are solving but we got our answer after squaring both sides so it is very possible that one between 0 and 3 over 4 might not necessarily be a solution to our answer let's find out which one when we substitute zero on the left hand side we're gonna get minus one right and on the right hand side we're gonna get square root of one which will just give us one is minus one equals to one well that should be an easy question they're not equals to each other so this is not true so x is equals to zero is not a solution to this problem because clearly when you substitute zero we don't get the same answer on the left hand side and on the right hand side okay let's check three over four so two multiplied by three over four minus one who is my calculator so let me go ahead and do that two multiplied by three over four minus one i'm getting one over two and then let me not use equals to there because i'm not sure they're equal to each other and then the square root of one minus three over four is it just one minus x yeah it is so one minus three over four we are getting one over two so they are equals to each other when x is equals to three over four so x is equals to three over four is actually our correct solution x is equals to zero is not a solution because minus one is not equals to one there we go that is 1.1.3 1.1.4 i feel like i'm going so fast in this video it's like i'm doing uh it's like i'm playing on 1.5 x no pun intended but anyway stories x plus three multiplied by three minus x being less than zero some people for some reason that i don't know will multiply out in this situation and just make a mess of everything but we're not gonna do that obviously uh we are gonna say critical values so always say critical values before you change the inequality to an equal sign because if you just change the inequality to an equal sign what is it that you're doing you're just changing things without giving reason but if you say critical values first i can see what is going on so x plus 3 multiplied by 3 minus x is equals to 0 so x is equals to minus 3 or x is equals to 3 so these are our critical values we need to then 
<laughs> write our answer, right? Our final answer in terms of an inequality. So this is what I always do. I say that there's two possible solutions after you get your critical values. Your answer lies between the critical values or outside the critical values. If it lies between the critical values, what will your solution look like? Well, x will be between minus 3 and 3. And then if it is outside the critical values, x will be greater than 3 or x will be less than minus three and these are our possible solutions we can easily do that by taking a number between minus three and plus three a simple number to work with is zero so let's take now let's take zero and substitute it in our inequality and see if it's gonna be uh, satisfied so in substituting zero we get three multiplied by three being less than zero three multiplied by three being less than zero does that sound fine no that doesn't found it doesn't sound fine nine is not less than zero so we know that this is not a solution we know that this is not a solution so we can cancel it out that is 1.1.4 let's take a look at 1.2 and see what is happening here so solve for x and y simultaneously uh, the first equation 2x is equals to y plus 2 and then the second equation i'll tell you why i'm laughing the second equation y minus 2 is equals to x squared minus 3x there's somebody where in this equation they came and they said x is equals to y plus 2 and they divide by 2 on both sides okay that is totally fine mathematically correct but it's not a good strategy because you are unnecessarily complicating your life because now you have to deal with a fraction you have to do you have to uh, substitute that fraction in place of x and square it which is a very difficult process why don't you just make y the subject of the formula instead and take two to the other side and have two x minus two and then you can substitute these here of which let's go ahead and do 2x minus 2 minus 2 is equals to x squared minus 3x. Not too bad. We're not squaring a fraction. 2x minus 4 is equals to x squared minus 3x. So we're going to have x squared minus 5x plus 4 is equals to 0. Should be easy to factorize this. x minus 4 x minus 1 is equal to 0 x is equal to 4 or x is equal to 1 if x is equal to 4 y will be equal to 2 multiplied by 4 minus 2 so 2 4 8 minus 2 6 and then y well when x is equal to 1 y will be 2 multiplied by 1 minus 2 that looks like y should be equal to 0 right so there we go that is 1.2 let's take a look at 1.3 okay 1.3 what is happening let's take a look an athlete calculated that if he increases his current speed of x kilometers by five kilometers per hour he can reduce his time by 12 minutes he will be participating in the city marathon which is 72 kilometers long determine the value of x okay so we have some words <laughs> we have some words here and for some way somehow we need to put these into equations and solve the problem uh 1.3 the last question equation one it's always a bit challenging right but let's take a look and see what is happening so his speed initially his speed initially is x right uh i think this question <laughs> uh if you're doing mathematics and history you probably get it wrong what is the probability that you're gonna get this question right if you're doing mathematics and history well maybe one two people will actually get it right we're doing history but if i had to place a bet, people that are doing history will get this question wrong so the speed initially is x and then when we increase the speed let's say uh speed with that uh note there on top um we increase it to x plus five kilometers per hour okay and then at the time 
we reduce the time by 12 minutes when we increase it to um to x plus five okay so what is the time initially what is the time initially when the speed is x what is the time when the speed is x and what is the time when we increase the speed to x plus five okay let's think about that let me just drag this down let me just drag this down so the time well we know that distance is equal to speed multiplied by time so time is equal to distance divided by speed so the time when the speed is x is the distance which is 72 right divided by x okay and then when the speed is x plus 5 the time will be 72 the distance divided by the speed which is x plus 5 so let's also differentiate this time because they're not going to be equal to each other but we know that we reduce the time by 12 minutes when we increase the speed to x plus 5 so t minus t prime should give us 12 minutes t minus t prime should give us 12 minutes but our speed is in kilometer well not our speed our distance is in kilometers and our speed is in kilometers per hour so we need to convert that to that 12 minutes to hours so 12 minutes to hours so 12 minutes uh, divided by 60 we convert it into hours all right so 12 over 60 that is 0 0.2 so we decrease the time taken by 0 0.2 hours when we increase the speed by 5 kilometers per hour so t the initial time when the speed is x minus t prime when we increase the speed by 5 kilometers per hour should give us 0 0.2 hours okay because we reduce the time by that much so what is t uh, 0 0.2 Okay, I'm trying to write here, facing an issue. 0 0.2. Okay, so t is... Uh, okay. <laughs> I don't know what's happening, but for some reason I can't write anymore. I'm trying to scroll, but I can't. On this side I can scroll, but on this side I can't scroll anymore. Um, okay. Uh, okay, I think it's fine now. So t, 72 over x, t prime... 72 divided by x plus 5 is equal to 0 0.2 okay so when you have this equation it's just a matter of solving for x right and in doing that you will end up with x being equals to x being equals to 40 right uh, how you actually get from a until x is equals to 40 is really up to you how you choose to manipulate it but you have to end up here one way or another there we go